Hello, this is Michael Gass with PDS Equipment. Today we're going to be talking about raster link color control. The first thing we have to understand in color control, color management, color matching, is that color is perceptual. Let me give you a couple of examples of what I am talking about. Uh, we see the PDS Equipment logo here. On top it looks orange, on bottom it looks kind of reddish purple. Those are actually the same color. If you look on top, we've got yellow bars on top. On the bottom, we have blue bars on top. And that difference makes it look red on top and more purple on bottom. But if we remove the bars, both of those colors are identical. Now, there's a reason I'm bringing up this point, but I'm going to make it a couple more times. So let's look at A and B here. Which one is darker, A or B? Not so fast because they are actually the same color. So all I did was put up a block of the same color and you can see B it matches, A it matches, but even when you sit here and look at it like this, you wanna think there's a gradient or something in that block I just put up, but there's not. They're the same color, it's just that perception tells us they're different. Uh, this is a fun one, I usually do this in groups, I'm not sure how this will work over the internet, but does this dress look gold and white or does it look blue and black? And about 70% of people are going to say it's gold and white, and about 30% are going to say it's blue and black. Usually it looks gold and white to me, but sometimes if I'm tired, it looks blue and black. Or if I get in the right light setting, it actually looks blue and black. And that's another point. The room you are in can drastically change uh, your perception of color. A and B, I bet you're on to me by now. Which one is darker? You guessed it. They're the same color. All I did was put a block of the same color over that joint that is fooling your eyes into thinking those are two different colors when they're actually the same color. We're going to look at one more, these two chess pieces. And uh, I bet you're on to me by now. They are the same color, identical. One just has a dark background. One has a light background. That makes them appear different colors. And I want to thank Bradenden.com for all of these illustrations that we just saw. If you want to go there, there's a couple more pretty cool ones you can look at. Uh, making the point that color is about perception. It's as much art as it is science. And why am I making that point? The reason I'm making that point is because color matching, it's an art. It's the art of converting a file to information a printer can print in such a way that it reflects as accurately as possible the original even though it's often impossible to print the full range of color in the original file so what we have here is a visible spectrum chart of color this white triangle is your rgb color space your black triangle is the cmyk color space in printing we print everything cmyk with a few exceptions there are a few spot colors and uh, process colors that we use but for the most part printing especially on UV printers it's in general CMYK straight up so in CMYK we're dealing with a much smaller color space so we have to take that visible spectrum and shrink it down to get it inside the CMYK color space and we do that uh, with some of the tricks that we just looked at in some of these photos a minute ago we, we basically fool the eye into thinking our color spectrum is bigger than it really is. Uh, two basics of images that you must understand to, to optimize your color matching, color balancing abilities. CMYK versus RGB. Images can be CMYK or RGB based. They can be converted from one to the other, but this often results in color shift. We're going to talk about that a little bit further. Image versus illustration. Images are pixel-based. Illustration is vector-based. Anything taken with a camera is going to be a pixel-based image. Anything that you pull up in Illustrator or Corel and draw circles and shapes to make logos or, or whatever you may be making, that's going to be illustration-based. You can take an image and scan it and turn it into a vector-based or an illustration. We do a lot of that with our texture photos texture files that we create. So a couple general rules. Images are best in the RGB with perceptual color matching. It's a general rule. There are exceptions. There's exceptions to every rule in the world of color. Get used to it. Illustration is better in CMYK with saturation or gray balance. 
everything printed is pixel or raster or dot based. So everything created in the RGB world, or excuse me, everything created in the illustration world, when we print it, it is going to be converted to the pixel or image world because you can only print dots, raster, or pixels, all the same thing. All right, so let's talk about RGB versus CMYK. RGB is an additive process. Any screen like a computer, TV, active billboard, or jumbotron. By the way, last night, Jake Camarda, the Georgia kicker in his NFL debut, hit the jumbotron in Dallas, his very first kick of his career. I thought that was pretty cool. But anyway, it's an additive process, and it's usually RGB. Light is emitted or added from the screen. You cannot create black, so the screen must be black. You create white, so the environment must be dark enough to perceive black color and contrast when picking out a tv turn off the tv kill the power to it whichever one has the darkest black screen is probably going to give you the best image uh, i was in vegas a couple weeks ago i was working yes again i was working and uh vegas of course you know they're known for glitz and glamour and bling out in broad daylight they had a uh, active billboard that you could see as plain as day. I was absolutely amazed. 25 years ago, we would have not thought that possible. So RGB is an additive process. CMYK is a subtractive process. Any printed or painted or almost any physical object is subtractive. In the physical world, the only uh, Exceptions to that are plants or animals that actually produce light. God, God made some amazing things. We have a few plants out there that, that glow. We have a few animals out there that actually produce their own light. So, um, But with those few exceptions, the real world printed, painted, physical objects are all subtractive. Light hits the object and every frequency is absorbed or subtracted except what you see bouncing back and interpreted as color. Now, you cannot create white, so we rely on the media to be white. The environment must be bright enough to perceive white, color, and contrast. And you can see these two uh, images showing you the difference between CMYK and RGB. And the conclusion, RB, RGB and CMYK, they're opposites. Uh, for the best results, leave the information in its native format, if possible, and let the RIP convert it. Digital images are always created in RGB. Vector files can be RGB or CMYK. But when we print it, it's always going to print CMYK. Where does color control occur? You need to understand this. Don't want to overwhelm you, so we're trying to keep it simple. Color control occurs in four places. When a file is created, when you hit File New uh, in um, Illustrator, Photoshop, Corel Draw, wherever it may be, uh, a file comes up and it's going to automatically create a bunch of settings. Uh, when you take a picture with your camera, scanner, or cell phone, it has images that it automatically or excuse me, has settings that automatically sets, and you can actually go in and change those settings. You can change the DPI, you can uh, change all kinds of settings. But for the most part, the defaults are going to work just fine. The second place color control occurs is when a file is saved. And again, the defaults usually work, and we're going to go over that quickly as well. But you can choose your color match settings. Uh, and separate settings are available for image and illustration, and that's important. Again, we need to understand the difference between image and illustration because we will deal with them differently through the workflow process. When a file is opened in the RIP software, you can choose settings based on the file type. Separate settings are available there for image and illustration as well. We'll get into that a little bit too. When a file is ripped for printing, um, that's where we always think we're going to do our color matching. But um, you can actually do it in four different places. Uh, when you're doing it in the RIP, you're just going to choose the best profile for your job. Uh, separate settings again for image and illustration. And profiles can be modified. And the profile's job is to compensate for media, ink, and file characteristics to most accurately reproduce the job. So here's two simple settings 
that you can go in Photoshop and Illustrator and set your presets as. Uh, save these, copy them, and you can just go in and program those. No need to spend a lot of time on that. Color matching settings in Raster Link. Uh, you can go in the Quality tab in Raster Link, and over on the right, Color Matching. Uh, you can, again, illustration or image, you have the same options for both, and more often than not, you're going to want them to be different. Sometimes they may work just fine being the same. So you've got perceptual, saturation, relative, absolute, and gray balance. What are all of those? Perceptual, it's best for photo images. Uh, it does your color matching best for photos, for RGB, for pixel-based. Saturation seems to do a little better for image. It gives you a deeper contrast. Relative performs color matching, but once the color matching gets outside of the bounds of your uh, color gamut, it just rounds it to the nearest. And therefore, you lose uh, your high saturation. It's collapsed. You may not see highlights as well. Absolute, uh, this maintains the color gamut, very similar to relative, uh, but it pushes a little harder on the ends so that you do get some, uh, some variance on both ends when you're starting to get outside your color gamut and gray balance um, if you're in cmyk mode especially in illustration and your screens are coming out muddy or gray you can switch to gray balance and that will usually fix that that's a lot of information there uh, but i will say if you stay with perception on images most of the time and maybe switch to saturation or gray balance for uh, illustration. That's usually going to get you where you need to be. Profile settings in raster link. Uh, UV printing is not as critical for selecting a profile as solvent printing. In solvent printing, you basically want to select a profile to match your media type. In UV, it's not as important. Uh, but what you can do is change your resolution. The higher the numbers, the slower your machine is going to print but the more quality you're going to get. So you always want to find that balance between quality and speed. Uh, you can change your passes. You can go up or down. You can change your resolution up or down uh, to match speed versus quality. Oops, let's go back. Also, we forgot to talk about over on the right. Uh, that's where you can set your... Uh, color matching. Oh, we went over that, so let's keep going. All right. You can also uh, flip over to the color adjust tab and you can take individual colors or the whole thing and adjust contrast. Uh, if your cyan is too weak, you can boost it in the middle, high, or shadows by 5% increments. You can do that on any color. I like to stay away from that because that's basically hand uh, matching, eye matching. Uh, just experimenting till you get it, but sometimes it comes in real, real handy just to be able to adjust there. Also, uh, you've got an advanced color adjustment where you can manipulate ink limits and dot gain curves manually. If you don't know what that means, I'd probably not use it. Uh, that's for advanced users only, but it does come in handy from time to time. All right, so the summary, the only magic bullet for color control is knowledge. If you know what tools you have available, you can get where you want to be. Uh, as a general rule, photographs stay in the RGB realm, but there are exceptions. And probably the best piece of advice I can give you is when a customer requests a specific color, require a physical sample. Don't let them tell you, hey, it's going to be Pantone 312, because there are several versions of Pantone 312. Don't let them tell you, hey, I pulled it up on the screen and it's RGB uh, number, 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 or CMYK number, number, don't do any of that. You require a physical sample if he wants a color matched exactly. That's the only way you can ensure that you get it because every screen looks different. Uh, many of the swatch books are different. There are several different versions of swatch books and printed on one printer, printing on another printer, again, not going to be the same. So always require a physical sample. And that's it. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.